The study of organic reactions is interesting and important, especially the biological chemistry reactions that account for our metabolism and health. Nevertheless, most of organic chemistry is oriented toward making molecules. Synthetic molecules, medicines that save lives, agricultural chemicals that let us produce the vast amounts of food that we now need, materials to wear, our clothes, materials to make things from. Most of the car parts these days that you touch when you're inside a car are made by organic chemistry. Kevlar, body armor. So the fact is that the application of organic reactions to make new molecules, important molecules for our lives, is a major challenge and most of organic chemistry is applied in that area. You now know substitution reactions that are very useful for synthetic organic chemistry. I have summarized the SN2 reactions that we have some understanding of at this point that can be applied in organic synthesis easily. And below that, I've summarized the SN1 reactions that can be applied in organic chemistry. Notice there are more SN2 reactions than SN1 reactions, but both have some kinds of applications in organic chemistry. And you've memorized these things. So, for instance, you know that when you have a primary group with a leaving group like bromide, iodide, or tosylate, you could treat that with these various reagents to make very specific products. Alkyl chlorides, alcohols, ethers, nitriles, esters. And for a few cases, we can actually have a secondary alkyl group with particularly good leaving groups and very good nucleophiles. And those very good nucleophiles will work even with secondary structures to make products. By the same token, we know that if we have a tertiary alcohol, that will react in SN1 chemistry. And under certain conditions, like treatment with hydrogen halide, you can get useful yields of compounds we'd like to have, tertiary alkyl halide. And tertiary alkyl halides, it turns out, can be treated under certain conditions, water, treatment with alcohol, to make alcohols and ethers. So here's a summary of the reaction facts we know. And we memorize these things by saying, if we start with this and treat with these reagents, we get these compounds. And your task is to memorize all this stuff. But memorizing these reactions is a bit like memorizing the vocabulary of a foreign language. You need to do it, but it isn't enough. We don't just spit out words when we're speaking a language. We have to put them together in reasonable ways. And we don't just spit out organic reaction facts when we're applying organic chemistry. We use those reaction facts in very specific ways to indicate how we could make molecules. Let me give you a couple of examples to illustrate uh, the uh, likely application of these reactions in organic synthesis. Suppose your task is to make the molecule I'm drawing here, and you can make this from whatever you want. You notice that here's the functional group, and that this OCH3 is attached to a primary carbon. We know that we can start with a primary alkyl halide or tosylate. We see it down here and treat with this reagent to make the functional group we're looking for. So let's write it down. We can make this molecule from this structure. And for a leaving group, we can pick bromine, iodine, or tosylate. We get our choice, let's pick bromine. And we need to treat that with sodium and alkoxide that gives us the right R group here. So we need a CH3, so we're gonna pick sodium OH3. And now we have outlined a reaction that makes what we want. In terms of synthetic planning, we do this a little differently. We consider this molecule we want to make as a target. And we use this symbol to mean could come from. And then we take the material that we can make it from in a single step. And here's our planning process to make this ether from this alkyl halide. Let's look at another case. Suppose we'd like to make this nitrile. Immediately we notice the functional group and we know how to make this functional group. We even know how to make it if we have a secondary structure. This should be a two here. This should be a two here. So as we see from our chemistry down here for secondary alkyl structures, this is secondary. It works. 
The reaction we want to use is treating a five-membered ring that has a very good leaving group. Let's say we'll pick tosylate this time with sodium cyanide. And in terms of viewing this as the target for planning purposes and saying that this could come from, we will write our planning like this. And again, you'll notice that we've left out the reagents. We know them, but in, in terms of planning purposes, we'll indicate the target and what it could come from. Let's take a look at another case or two. Suppose we want to make this structure. Immediately we notice the functional group and we notice that this is a tertiary carbon. We know that if we're going to use a substitution reaction, it cannot be an SN2 reaction because it's at a tertiary carbon, but it can be an SN1 reaction. So let's write it down. We look at this tertiary alcohol, the compound we want to make. We look at the SN1 chemistry we have available. And we notice that tertiary alcohols can be made from tertiary halides, chloride, bromide, or iodine. So that's what we need to draw here. Where we want the OH, we need to put a halide. Let's put chloride. And we see that if we want to make that compound, we treat the chloride with water. Now again, for synthesis purposes and planning, this is a target molecule. And it could come from, as we've just outlined, this chloride. So for synthetic planning purposes, here's what we write down. This target molecule, a tertiary alcohol, could come from the starting material, a tertiary chloride. Now let's look at one more. Suppose we wanted to make a tertiary bromide. Our eye immediately goes to the functional group we need to make. It's a bromide. We notice right away that this is on a tertiary carbon. We recall that we can make tertiary bromides using SN1 chemistry. Here it is. It's with an alcohol. There's our OH. And we'll treat it with the correct hydrogen halide, in this case bromide. So we use HBr. So here's our alcohol. We need a bromide, so we use HBr. And there's the reaction we'll use. For planning purposes, we'll think of it as a tertiary alkyl bromide as the target, and the material we can use to make it is this guy. And so our answer regarding how to make that molecule is here in the box. This alkyl bromide, which is tertiary, could come from this tertiary alcohol. So, bottom line. Memorizing the substitution reactions is important, but it's like memorizing vocabulary. We will use those synthetic reactions to show how we can make molecules. And so in the ultimate analysis, we need to learn these reaction facts, both as was shown here and with the opposite organization, thinking of these reactions as ways to make compounds. These guys here. But you know how to make alkyl halides, alcohols, and ethers, thiols, thioethers. These are not names that you have to memorize right now, but I'm writing them because I want you to be impressed by how many things you know how to make. These functional groups are all things you know how to make. Alkyl halides, alcohols, ethers, thiols, thioethers, nitriles, and esters, using the chemistry that's summarized here. And remembering that specific ap application of reactions depend on whether we have a primary, secondary, or tertiary alkyl structures.